Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates and we're gonna start first with Andrew Jacked and we don't have a lot from Andrew Jacked even though he's competing next week at Texas Pro he really hasn't posted any physique update since this one at four and a half weeks out but today we got a little sneak peek it's not much once again when I saw it, I thought it was very interesting, at least it was to me, so I wanted to share it with you guys here. So here you go, you can't really see much, but you can basically see the texture of his skin, and the difference between now and four and a half weeks out is noticeable for sure. He's definitely looking a lot drier, a lot harder and leaner, like you don't see the, 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 the puffiness, the layer of water that he was holding at four and a half weeks out. No, not anymore, not really. He definitely looks a lot harder, a lot drier. Once again, the texture of the skin looks much, much better. So yeah, he looks like he's pretty much ready for the stage. He has one more week to go to do the peak week, basically to dry out a little bit more, to fill out. Hopefully he will give us a full physique update, but even right here, I think it's very noticeable that he's gonna bring some solid conditioning. Like you can see it in his arms, in his chest, in his shoulders as well. Like this is, this is good. This definitely looks lean. You can see a little bit of his quad as he's walking out, so yeah, I mean, I was wondering what kind of conditioning he's gonna bring to the Texas Pro, because, again, at four and a half weeks out, you know, it wasn't that good, like, it wasn't like he was ahead of time, I mean, guys are, you know, in this kind of conditioning at, like, eight weeks out, ten weeks out, some of them, not all of them, so I didn't know for sure what kind of package is he gonna bring to the Texas Pro stage, but it looks like he's gonna bring some really good conditioning. And with the improvements he made this year in the offseason, it's gonna be a dangerous package. And honestly, I have this guy potentially in top four this year the Mr. Olympia. I think he's gonna jump places. I mean, I think he's gonna beat Brandon Curry this year. I'm pretty sure about that. I don't know if he can still hang against the top three guys, uh, Hardy, uh, Derek, and Samson, because those guys are very, very complete all around. Andrew Jack had some flaws last year. It looks like he fixed some of them. I'm really curious to see his side thickness, that was a big issue, and I don't think he fixed that uh, so much, I think it's gonna be still visible, so I don't have him in my top 3, probably not, but top 4, you know, beating Brandon Curry and beating uh, Nick Walker potentially, yeah, I can definitely see that happening, I mean, especially with the improvements in his arms now, and we can't really see the rest of his physique in this, in this one photo, so maybe his back is also better, maybe his hamstrings and glutes are more separated, uh, more matured, maybe his side thickness is also improved, we'll see in one week from now, as of right now, we don't have much, we have this little short video where you can kind of see his conditioning, and it looks like he is bringing it. Alright, next up we got John De La Rosa, and this photo was posted yesterday, 19 hours ago as you can see, and he is about to compete today. So this is probably the last update that he's gonna post before the show, show is about to start in any moment, like in a couple of hours maybe, so we got this physique update uh, from yesterday, and it looks like, it, to me, it looks like he most likely is going to win the Tampa Pro, I mean, he is going against some pretty good guys, like Mo Fuda, you know, that guy was really good at Chicago, and then there are guys like Tim Budesheim, Vlad Zuharuchko, Jordan Hutchinson, and so on, but I'm pretty sure John can beat all of them, I mean, he was fourth at the, at the Arnold Classic, so he was really good at that show, I'm pretty sure he's the favorite to win this one, and uh, the only guy that can potentially stop him is Mo Fuda, but we'll see, I am betting on John, though, because, mainly because of his back, he's definitely better in the back area, Mofura is gonna be better from the front because of his massive quads, but now we can take a look at uh, John as well, and we can see the improvements he made, it's a video, I'm gonna play it in a moment, but let's first read what he says here, so he says he's 11 pounds up from where he was last year at Tampa Pro, and uh, he's 6 pounds up from the Arnold as well, so he definitely made progress, Let's take a look at this video now, so first pose is side chest pose, and yeah, I definitely do see improvements in thickness in the lower body and the upper body as well, 
he's back. He's probably the reason why he's gonna win this show because his back is basically his strongest point uh, these days. Like it's sharp, it's wide, and like his glutes are always in condition. So against Mufura, that's gonna be his strength. However, his weakness is, like I said, his quads from the front, and Mofura has some freaking sick quads, so I don't know how that will play out, but yeah, as of right now, I feel like John is a little bit more complete, more conditioned, but anything can happen, really, we'll see. You know, John's legs are definitely his weakest body part, especially like from the front. In the side pose or the back pose, it's not really that big of an issue, but like in the front pose, he lacks uh, width in the legs. And this guy's quads from the front are probably his strongest body part, one of the most impressive quads in the game right now, honestly. So he's gonna expose him in that regard, and I feel like he has probably a, a nicer structure, you know, like a smaller waist, better X-frame and so on. But his back is definitely nowhere near this good, and John held his own against the very best bodybuilder in the world right now, Hadi Japan. So I think we're gonna have a really interesting battle for that first spot at Tampa Pro. Alright, next up, we got another physique update from Regan Grimes. It's just him hitting a front double bicep, or, I don't know, some kind of variation of it. It looks sort of like a victory pose, something between. And he's, uh, as he says, off-seasoning. And we know that he's 300 pounds at this point. And if you read through the comments, you will see a lot of positive comments, actually. People saying that he looks good, that he looks super impressive, that he's getting bigger and so on. But honestly, I don't really think I see it. You know, I mean, 300 pounds for Egan is not heavy at all, honestly. And his plan is basically to stay at around 300 pounds and, like, uh, try to work on uh, being more conditioned at that weight and then later lose not much and get on stage. So I don't know what kind of uh, supplements he's taking right now. Maybe he's not taking a lot and he's still looking... He's still this heavy. If that's the case, then great. But, uh, you know, in, in order for him to achieve his full potential... He, he needs to blast things a little bit more, like he needs to get a little bit bigger in the offseason, you know. You know, he's about uh, Samson Dauda's height, they're pretty much the same height, and Samson goes up to like 340 pounds in the offseason, with the conditioning just as good as Regan's right here, or even better maybe. So this is not a situation like with Derek Lansford, I mean, Derek is already big enough because he obviously won the Mr. Olympia, like sure, he can grow certain body parts, but... Regan, he needs to grow everywhere, really. You know, at a Mr. Olympia where Regan was in condition, as he wasn't really at Italy Pro and Spain Pro, I mean, he was okay, it was good enough, he won that show, so, I mean, that's, that's decent conditioning, I guess. But at the Olympia, he was quite lean. And at that, uh, at that body fat percent, he is like 260 on stage, which is very light for a guy who is six foot tall. And it shows, you know, it's not all about the numbers, it's not just, you know, how much he weighs, you can see that he's definitely not big enough, you can't compare this size to Samson Dauda's size, for example, so if he wants to be top level contender, he needs to push that mass way higher. This is definitely not cutting it, and I'm not seeing the improvements that I want to see, like, I want to see more peak in the biceps, I want to see, like, bigger arms, for example, and, like, legs, I mean, everything really needs to come up, so, you know, he wants to stay relatively lean and, you know, relatively light and, like, um, function normally the entire year, and then focus on other things in life, sure, that's fine, but as a fan of bodybuilding, I want to see the best possible version of Regan on stage, and what he's doing right now, I don't think he's maxing it out. I don't think so. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. All right, and finally, we got a physique update from Raphael Brandau, who is looking absolutely massive at 10 weeks out, but way out of shape for some reason. I mean, is he out of the Mr. Olympia? Is he even doing the Mr. Olympia? He is qualified, and as far as I know, he is prepping... Like, in this post, they say he's 10 weeks out, so I think he's gonna do it, but why is he this much out of shape at 10 weeks out? Can he really be shredded in 10 weeks out? 
I mean, I know that he has a crazy fast metabolism. He spoke about his, him and his coach, Neil Hill. Like, he was having uh, high carb days of, like, 1,000 grams of carbs very often during his uh, prep for the Arnold Classic. And, like, his medium days were, like, 600 grams of carbs. And, like, his low days, which were very rare, they were, like, uh, twice a week, uh, were, like, 300 grams of carbs. So, like, he was eating a ton of food and he was getting shredded. So, if they really push it for the 10 weeks... Uh, yeah, I believe he can get lean, but is he gonna be shredded? I don't know. Ten weeks out, this is this is very deep into the offseason. This looks like he's very deep into the offseason, so I don't know. I don't know what to expect. If he gets shredded in ten weeks, that would be pretty crazy. But yeah, I believe it's doable. I just don't know if this is exactly the right game plan. And uh, if they do it, and if he looks good, then yeah, yeah, sure, I can see why they might do this. Because maybe Neil figured out that uh, Rafael gets crazy fast in condition. And if he holds the condition for way too long, he starts to fade. This is a thing that happens to some guys. So maybe that's their game plan. You know, just get in condition right on time, on the day for the Mr. Olympia stage, and show up looking lean enough and... With the improvements in size, which I think he definitely made, because look at him. Look at how massive he is right now. He bulked up heavily, that's for sure. I'm pretty sure he utilized his post show rebound after the Arnold Classic Brazil, which he won. And it looks like he definitely grew some new tissue. He was already much, much improved at the Arnold Classic compared to a year before that. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna see an even bigger version of Rafael Brandau. And we kind of started forgetting about him, you know, talking about like Martin Fitzwater uh, placing there in the top. Uh, it might be Rafael Brandau who, who surprises us all. I mean, because he was very impressed with the Arnold Classic. And it looks like he made some solid improvements. Look at his freaking legs right now as well. I definitely don't think his legs were ever this freaking massive. Like, this is looking uh, insane. Honestly, this is looking super impressive. It's hard to imagine that this guy is actually a taller bodybuilder. He's also like, kind of like uh, Regan Grimes, for example. He's like six foot, maybe even taller than that. I don't know, but he looks like he's five foot seven. how big he is. I mean, his legs are gonna dwarf legs of Nick Walker, for example. I mean, we'll see how much of this will stay once he gets in condition, but I don't see a lot of body fat on those legs, at least. Like, they're looking pretty lean. Like, he is holding water everywhere, but I don't think he's, he has a lot of fat on him. So, yeah, I think we're gonna see a new version of Rafael Brandau at this year's Mr. Olympia, and he might be the guy that surprises us all. We'll see. Where do you guys have him placing? Whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon, guys. All the best and bye-bye.